In this video, I want to break down what makes a great play in Madden and how you can actually create this from multiple formations and really develop your own system. And so today we're going to be talking about what makes a great offensive play and how you can actually use this concept to create one of the best concepts from any playbook. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cody. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the trips tight end in the New England Patriots playbook. Personally, that's one of my favorite formations and one of my favorite um, and has a lot of my favorite route combinations in it. If you want to learn my full trips tight end offensive ebook, you can join my Patreon. It has the full ebook in there and it will teach you all the ins and outs of one of the best offenses in Madden for the better part of the last five to six years. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video and talk about this play drive post and what makes a great Madden play. And I want to kind of just come at it from a little bit of a different angle um, than I have in previous videos and talk about, again, this idea of power counter balance and how you actually go about building a concept. So I'm uh, just going to come out and cover four drop out of the dollar three, two, six. I've got all the coverages in my audibles and we're going to be taking a look at this play drive post. This is one of my favorite plays year over year. And again, I just want to show you and walk you through step by step how you can create a really, really good concept. So first things first, you have to understand that when you're in trips formation, your trips formation can very easily be a doubles formation. It can also very easily be a compression formation. I'm going to show you how that can happen. So first things first, we can motion any of these two receivers primarily, but you can motion any of these guys to the right side of the screen. And what you'll see is now my trips formation where I had three receiving threats to the left side. Now I have three receiving threats to the right side. And so you see that I've turned a trip set into a double set just by a simple motion. Now, another thing that I wanna show you real quick here by just moving the ball over here is I wanna show you how I can turn this into a compression set. I'm just gonna motion Randall Cobb to the left. This is a secret motion in trips tied in and it's really a short side concept that works best. But now you see I basically have a tight offset, if you will, or a tight formation here to the right, and then I have a double set to the to the left. So with motion, you can create you can take a formation and you could turn it into something else. The reason this is important is because most defenses defend based on formation. Here's what I mean by that. So I'm just gonna go to one of the most popular defenses for uh, Madden, for Trips Tight End, and it's basically this right here. We're gonna put a, we're not gonna have any deep zone on the right, and then we're gonna use her with this guy, and essentially what we could do here is we could actually do something like this. Well, we have a curl flat, a hard flat, and then our user is gonna be in the middle of field working over here into this side if there's no routes on the right. So you can see how this works. Now, why is this important? It's important to understand how they're gonna defend you because then you can understand how to attack the defense. Most defenses are going to roll coverages to your receiving threat so that they can stop essentially this play right here, flood. So that they can basically stop this concept. This is one of the most popular things people will do. You see the underneath flat takes that. The deep flat doesn't take that, but I could set zone drops and fix that real quick. So that's one of the biggest ways that people are going to defend you. So you have to understand that. Another popular defense that you're going to face, especially in Madden 23, is a pressure defense. A pressure defense that looks essentially like this, where we're gonna have um, three, or apologies, we're gonna have four underneath defenders, and then we're going to have two deep defenders, and we're gonna rush five. Another variation of this could be something like this, where we send five, but now we have uh, only three underneath defenders, okay? One of those underneath defenders is traditionally going to be your user okay so those are all some different strategies that people can employ to try to lock you up as, a, as an offense but when you ask the question again what constitutes and why they do what they do you have to come back to tendencies and most people's tendencies if you set three receivers over here to the left side of the screen you're probably going to try to flood a zone that direction with some kind of concept essentially like this. 
which is very accurate. And that's not a bad play call. As you see right here, it's going to force a very specific defense. But when we talk about what makes a great Madden play, it really is something that, number one, you have to be able to beat man-to-man. -man. Number two, the play has to connect. All of the routes on the play need to work together to beat the defense. Very important uh, point. They need to flow together as one, okay? And then thirdly, they need to be able to beat every single defense in the game. We're not in a day in, in an age anymore where the defense can just run like it needs to be able to beat all the stock coverages the base coverages you need to force them to have to do something specific to stop your play in order for it to be a great play and so one of my favorite concepts is the levels concept and essentially what levels is is we're literally going to attack the defense in levels so we're going to have essentially a five yard a five yard route we're going to have about a 10 to 15 yard route on this side. And then over here, we can kind of do the same thing. We can have a short route and a deep route. And what you'll see is they'll have to double flat this side of the field. And then they can't double. If they double flat over here, now there's nobody in the middle of the field to be able to guard the levels. Okay. So that's kind of the core piece of what it means to build a power play something that can beat everything that you're comfortable reading with and you want to maximize the efficiency of your routes i think that's really really important so how i like to do this is i'm going to take randall cobb and we're going to put him in motion to the right side of the screen this is going to turn this into a doubles set if you will now from here i have to, I have the ability to attack a defense in levels. I have a high low on the left with this in route to Adams and this post to Scantling. And then even more so, I'm gonna take Robert Tunyon and I'm actually gonna put him on a streak route up the seam. Why would I do that? It's, gonna, it's because we're going to again stretch the deep zones vertical to open up the middle of the field for that post to be able to come underneath that level. Now over here on the right side of the screen, you have a couple of different options. And again, I wanna stress that it comes back to number one, understanding what does the defense going to do? And I also think that it's really important to understand um, how your routes are going to go together here. So if we watch this, if I were to take Randall Cobb and put him on a curl, you'll see that circle whenever he runs is gonna kinda of run just a little bit over the top of him but it's still not quite where I would want it to be. So what I like to do is ask the question, ask a little bit of a different question. What are some of the coverages that can give my primary concept, which is my levels over here on the left side, what are some coverages that can give this trouble that I can beat over here? And really the answer is man to man. Man to man is really the only thing that can stop this concept or like shaded down cover two with a really good user. Okay, um, so what I like to do is create a man beater. So I'm gonna have a deep out to Cobb, which allows me also to now have a short out to Jones, both the routes of which beat man to man. And so what you'll see here is I'm gonna go to man coverage. If I get a man read, now I know I can just take my check down right there, boom, and we're gonna get about 10 to 15 yards. See how I'm kind of filling in the play out of the core concept, which is levels. Now, another thing that you can do with this that is another variation of the same thing. This is actually a really good variation of levels. So what we can do is, if we're not too concerned with the deep zones over the middle of the field, let's say they're playing a lot of cover two or cover four drop on us. They're not playing a lot of cover three, right? What we can do is we could take Randall Cobb and we can motion him and put him on a fade and then just put our running back on an out. Why would this be a good route combination? Well, now my tight end, who's going to be on the outbreaking route, is unbumpable and he's going to do a little pretty decent job at beating man to man, especially if you have a little bit better route runner than I do in this video. So you can kind of put these together. Another play that you could do the same basic principle from is PA counter go. I can put Devontae Adams on an in. I could put Cobb on a fade 
and I could leave the play action if I wanted to have a little bit better pass protection. And again, you see these out cutting routes from the tight end are really effective at beating man to man. Now back to our original concept levels on the left side. And I talked a little bit about it in the intro, but I think that cover two can give this a little bit of trouble in Madden, not so much in the real NFL, but in Madden, I think that this can certainly give us some trouble, but let's just watch the concept. Our first read is actually our seam. And then we're going to come over here and read our high low. So we're gonna look at our seam. That's not open, but look at that. Our little in route comes right in. Why does it do that? Because the yellow zones are gonna get pulled back because of the spacing and because of the route progressions. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade our coverage down. I said shade it down cover two with a good user can do okay. What I mean by a good user, I'm gonna put this guy in the vertical seam to take away our seam streak. So this is shaded down cover two. I've got my seam read here, I've got my deep out, and I've got my quick out to the back. And what you'll see here, if I'm looking look at my seam, not there, look back here, you see how that hard flat can kind of come underneath in that area. Now, I'm gonna show you what we can do when that happens. So again, shaded down. Normally people aren't gonna play traditional hard flats, I will say that real quick, um, but they might, okay? But normally they're not going to and if they are now we have what we have we have a high low on the right side of the screen so i go here okay that looks a little muddy okay now i'm going to come back here and throw that or i could have thrown my running back out route and my running back out route was wide open so you see kind of the idea here if they go traditional hard flat cover two you see how much adjustments they're going to really have to make to shut this down because if they go with the hard flat over here on the right side, I should be able to relatively easily pop this quick uh, this quick route to triangle right on that corner. As you can see right there, he's right he's right in a, a really good way, uh, a really good uh, opening to catch the football. Now another coverage you're going to get is cover three. So how does this fare against cover three? Well, it's going to be similar. Um, cover three will do a little bit better of a job. But again, we were high lowing the flat defender. So I've got my seam read. That's not there. And my drag, nope. And then on the back side, I've got that route coming over the top. So you see how levels can, again, progress across the field. That's another reason why, you know, I think something that is worth noting is you can also run a traditional four verts over here too. There's no reason you couldn't. So you could run two vertical with an out route to the back. This is not a bad concept by any means. Um, and what you'll see but this, now my running back's a little bit more important in this play, and that route right there is a little bit more important. And so now, again, we put them in a position where they basically have to double flat both sides to take it away, and then the whole middle of the field is able to be used for me to be able to throw the ball. So those are some basic tenets just in terms of how to build um, an incredible passing offense. You have to be able to attack every angle of the field. Now, a variation of levels that is really good, in my opinion, is something like this. We're still going to have our underneath route from Adams, but now we're going to threaten them over the top. Because, again, we saw that the cover three hard flat or some of that stuff was giving us a little bit of trouble. Well, now we can threaten them over this, you know, over the top here with a concept like this. And then on the right side, we can kind of create a little bit of a shallow cross concept, if you will, like this. And now my corner route is going to be able to beat a hard flat every single time. So now what it forces them into these plays, these couple plays together, it, it literally has, they have to play a coverage that basically looks, uh, that basically looks like this. Well, now the whole middle of the field is wide open. And also, by the way, they're dropping eight people in coverage. Um, and so we come back to our levels play with a concept like this. And what you should see here is the, the seam read, like something like this here. And then on the back side of this, you know, just a quick out, smart routed out, whatever you want to put. These smart routed outs are really good too. But you see middle there and then middle there, and you're going to be able to move the ball relatively effectively. So those are two ways to attack the defense and just a little bit of a, a power counter. And again, letting the plays kind of do the work for you. And then even, even further on this, you could do something like this where we have that deep corner route to Tunyon. We have 
um, this little fade here to cob. And then on the back side, we can do a little whip route and a little dig, open up the whole middle of the field for Devontae Adams to be able to work. And we're going to attack them deep down the sideline on the right side. These are components of an effective offense, being able to attack every everywhere on the field using motion to create different formations being able to beat man-to-man -man coverage we can also run the ball from this that those are some components of what makes an effective offense and so when you're putting your plays together you got to understand some of those answers do you have answers to different types of things that you know the defense is going to do they're going to blitz you they're going to play man they're going to play double mabel double flat defense they're going to play regular defenses and can you actually manipulate all of those covers? Those are some litmus tests to know if you're on the right track with your offensive scheme. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video and if you want to learn more about the Trips Tied In, you can get my full Trips Tied In offensive ebook by joining our Patreon. It's only $10 to sign up and it gets you access to everything over there, all of our ebooks, including our Trips Tied In offense. So if you want to grab that, head on down to the description and click the link down below to join our Patreon.